Good morning, church. The Bible reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 11. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit. And He distributes them to each one, just as He determines. Thank you. Thank you very much for that this morning. Great to be here in service with you today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nathan, and it's my privilege to be able to bring the first message in this new series to us today. And so whether you're in the building or whether you're watching online, uh, it's great to have you with us as we start this new series, Created for King and Community. Catchy title, isn't it? Can't say that I came up with it, unfortunately, so I can't claim any credit there. Uh, but... It's a really catchy title. And, uh, you know, we can start thinking about where it all came from. And realistically, it's kind of loosely based on the uh, motto or declaration that's been used several times throughout history about a declaration of loyalty to those who served the monarchy, whether it was in war or whether it was in service. Um, kind of timely with all the royal family stuff that's been going on at the moment. But hey, before we get into uh, conversations about, you know, monarchies or colonialism or republics or any of that kind of stuff, uh, that's not the point of our series today, so you can put those conversations aside for later. Uh, but instead, uh, as you made a guess from our scripture reading today, it's about a calling over each one of our lives, that we are, uh, that we are called to community that we are called to be a part of something that is bigger than ourselves. We were made especially by God for his glory. And, uh, and some of that, so much of that is seen in the way that how God builds community and loves doing that through us. And so in this series, we're going to look at some of the way that God calls us and equips us to be his community together in service of the King, King Jesus. But today, I want to talk to you about gifts. And uh, so I've entitled today's message, Who Doesn't Love a Gift? Because, I mean, let's be honest here, who doesn't love a gift, yeah? Whether it's Christmas or birthdays or just a random present that appears uh, in your life for some reason, everybody loves gifts of one form or another, and so uh, that's where we're going to kind of talk uh, about this for now. And, uh, you know, let's be honest here as well, if you've been around church for any period of time, uh, you've probably heard lots of messages about uh, gifts. You probably kind of heard what the topic was for this series and you go, ah, I know what's coming. It's going to be one of those series where, you know, that we get up and we talk about all these kind of different spiritual gifts and that we've been given one of those and we're going to get all excited about that. And, and then someone's going to be standing by the door on your way out today with a sign up sheet uh, to be able to volunteer and to come and put your name down so you can use your spiritual gifts and we can put you in the spot that that spiritual gift applies to. And now, uh, you know, that's the reality of some of the things that you may have heard in the kind of spiritual gift series, and there's nothing wrong with that. Well, this is one of the reasons, though, that I love this, the title of this series, because it's not quite like that. Because while this is a series about how God gifts us, and let's be honest, uh, we do hope that some of you get excited about the gifts that God has given you and, and look for some opportunities or ways that you might use them in our community here. That's not really the point. Instead, it's a series that reminds us that we exist in community. And our gifts, our service, are not just about doing a job. It's about building that community. Does anyone here remember the seven dwarves? You know, Snow White and the seven dwarves? Anyone remember them? Yeah? Do you remember uh, the, the song that they used to sing? Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. Anyone? 
Just me? Oh, no, there's a few of us. Oh, good, that's good. <laughs> now, the really interesting question here is, if we asked what that song was, most of you could have sung that first bit, or even if you couldn't sing it, you would have known the words, yeah? Does anyone know the next couple of lines to that song? I didn't think so. Uh, I'll be honest and say I didn't know the next couple of lines either, so I had to Google it. Um, Google is your friend. And so um, I had a look at this, and here it is. It's actually really interesting to have a look. The rest of the song, or the next line in the song goes like this. Um, So think about this, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. Uh, We dig up diamonds by the score, a thousand rubies, sometimes more. But we don't know what we dig them for. We dig a dig, 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 dig. Some quality song lyrics there for you. Uh, But the point being is that here are these seven dwarves. Every day they get up, they go out and they mine and they dig up rubies and diamonds and it's hi-ho, hi-ho, and they sound so excited about it. But the reality is there's no point to what they're doing. And they don't even know why they're doing it. It's just like, this is what we've always done. Or maybe the people who wrote the story of seven, the, uh, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves were going, we can't really be bothered taking the time to do a backstory to this song. So we're just going to you know, put it as it is. But it really struck me when I read those words in that song that they're going and they have no point to what they're doing. They're serving just because they feel they should. It's work for the sake of of work and it misses the point and I think sometimes when we have these kind of series where we talk about gifts and we're calling uh, to community and to volunteering and this kind of stuff that sometimes we can feel like that that we can feel like the whole point of this series is hi ho hi ho it's off to serve we go and we're being called to just work together And we miss the point of what this whole thing is about and the reason why God has gifted us in this way we don't want to be like the seven dwarves in this, in this kind of series as we look at this over the next couple of weeks. We want to understand the purpose that God has in giving us gifts. And so that's what we're going to look at today. So let's talk about gifts. There are four gifts uh, that I uh, feel like that God gives us, and, and we're going to have a slide of those up in for you in a moment. And we're going to consider each of these just really quickly today. The first of these is forgiveness. We have each been offered a gift of forgiveness of sin by grace through Jesus as an invitation to relationship with God and with our neighbor. In Matthew 22, 37 and 38, the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. We're separated from God by our decisions, by our failings. And God makes a way through Jesus, through the forgiveness of sin, to make a way for relationship with him because this is God's intention. This is his heart for us, is that we would be in relationship with him and with each other. The second gift that we're given is the gift of eternal life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Uh, another translation that you may have it abundantly that kind of overflowing full over the top kind of life the life that was always meant to be and it is life abundant in the now and in the ongoing not just this future thing that maybe one day uh, eternal life will be mine kind of thing but it is a life that we are given now and ongoing into the future and into eternity with Jesus thirdly we're given the gift of the Holy Spirit In our hearts through relationship with Jesus, Romans uh, 5 verse 5 says, Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. When we come to that point of relationship with Jesus, one of the gifts that he gives us is that he comes to live within our hearts. Closer than a brother, our comforter, our wisdom that he gives to us all these kind of things come into our lives through his holy spirit and then the fourth one there that we're going to spend some time looking at today spiritual gifts first peter 4 verse 10 uh, in the nlt uh, says god has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts use them well to serve one another 
And so that's going to be our focus for today, the fourth of those four gifts. Uh, the other ones are great gifts, and, and there'll be sermons for another time, I'm sure, that we'll look at all that kind of stuff. But for today, we're going to look at spiritual gifts, but maybe, as I said, with a little bit of a different perspective. One of the things though, I did want to point out as we consider these four spiritual gifts that are up on the screen now, do you notice the uh, focus for each one of these gifts? Forgiveness, eternal life, the Holy Spirit, and spiritual gifts. All of them point to the fact that the gift is not in and of itself. It is a gift that is designed for relationship. Forgiveness, eternal life, the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, all of them given with a focus on relationship and connection. So I want you to hold on to that thought this morning as we uh, have a bit of a closer look at the idea of spiritual gifts. As I said before, many of us have probably been in series before where we've talked about spiritual gifts and uh, oftentimes what we're hearing when we're sitting there, particularly depending on what you know, gifting we have in our life, is that we hear something that goes along the lines of um, something like this, blah, 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 preaching, prophecy, faith, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Maybe administration gets thrown there in there as well. Not that most preachers are trying to do that, but depending on the verse that we choose, it can sound pretty focused on those kind of upfront or maybe what we might consider high-powered type gifts. But that isn't the whole picture. Let's be honest, our text for today was one of those passages, wasn't it? When you look back, it refers to wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, amongst a bunch of others. And it's quite easy sometimes as we're sitting there uh, in a chair listening to a message like that and going, uh, as you're going through the list, you're going, well, I, I don't prophesy and, uh, you know, I, I'm not getting up there to preach, no way on earth. And, uh, you know, and we go through these things and kind of tick ourselves off the list. So we get to the end of it and go, actually, it doesn't look like God has any spiritual gifts for me. I'm not in the list. Well, this is one of the reasons why I like Romans 12, verse 6 to 8. Let me read that for you. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance to your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. You know, we recognize and are grateful for all the gifts that God has placed in his body. But if we are honest, there are times, particularly within the church, as we're looking at these things, that we can tend to lift up some of them more than others. See, Romans 12 still mentions things like prophecy and teaching, but I love the fact that it also references some of the maybe lesser known spiritual gifts of serving and encouragement, giving and mercy. Let's think about these just for a second. It talks about a gift of serving or ministry. The Greek word here for serving comes from the root word that means an attendant or a waiter. You know, I love this idea because uh, one of the things that I like to do is to kind of serve by doing the menial things. Uh, my son and I are part of the facilities team here. And one of my favorite things is actually to go around and vacuum after everybody's gone. And I like to do that as part of my serving here. And I like the idea that Romans here references that and says, hey, are you doing that kind of thing? Are you doing the practical things? Are you doing some of the more maybe menial things uh, that don't, necessarily directly make an impact on people or for the kingdom so we think but this verse tells us differently it says that if it is serving then serve if your gift is to be in the background and supporting and helping and and doing those things that just help community to work then you do that because God has gifted you to do that and you are a blessing to the community when you do it talks about acts of mercy this means to be compassionate in word or deed. Finding ways to, to love and support one another as an expression of that mercy, as an expression of the heart of God. I love seeing those opportunities that we have as a community to be, you know, whether it's to uh, provide a meal to somebody who's sick or needs help, to uh, get in and just help out with some things around the house maybe that people might need doing. 
to come alongside and support in times of crisis when somebody just needs a, a shoulder to be able to lean on as they work their way through some of the more difficult times in life. We are doing these things as an expression of compassion and care. And this is part of the gift that God has placed within you to be able to do that. It talks about encouragement. Literally to call near, to exhort, to lift up. Hey, you know the kind of person I'm talking about. You know those people when you kind of, you spend time with them and you can't actually help coming away from the conversation with them feeling just like the sun shining a little brighter and, and life is all coming together even though life around you may totally suck. But somehow you come away from that conversation just reminded that God is still God and that he is in charge even though the things around us feel like a mess. I love people with this gifting. And while at different points we can fall in the mistake of lifting up, you know, the, the, the bigger kind of gifts or the more upfront kind of gifts, these are the gifts, I believe, that truly begin to move and make community together. And these are just a couple of the gifts that are mentioned in the Bible. And later in this series, we will point you some places where you can learn more about these different gifts. But every week there are people in this community who are living out these gifts as part of their service, many times in ways that uh, you and I don't even know are happening. Let me give you an example. A number of years ago, I was the associate pastor at a Church of Christ. And uh, every Christmas, we would put on this big Christmas drama production uh, that we would do. And it was a really lots of fun and, and really enjoyed it. But man, it was tiring. <laughs> and so the, the, the lady and the team running Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Uh, but I remember this particular year, um, we had gone through and, and we did two services on a Christmas Eve. And, and, and so doing all this leading up to it, the Christmas Eve services were done. And they're like, literally hundreds of people come along. Uh, lots of people for that would never go to church any other time. It was great. And then um, my senior pastor goes on leave between Christmas Eve and New Year. And so I'm kind of left to look after the church over that period. Uh, and so Sunday's coming. And of course, after a big service like a Christmas Eve service, you can imagine what the auditorium looked like. There's stuff everywhere, you know, chairs everywhere, rubbish and stuff. And so, you know, a day or two after Christmas Eve, I'm in there stacking chairs, putting rubbish in bins, after having spent weeks leading up to this point doing all of this drama production stuff. And I remember I was about halfway through vacuuming our auditorium, which is you know, maybe a little bit smaller than this, uh, the front half of this auditorium. And I remember as I'm going around, I'm kind of, we didn't have a big snazzy vacuum like we have here. We had a backpack vacuum, so I'm <laughs> kind of thing. And I get about halfway through doing this, and, and the whole time while I've been vacuuming, I'm like, oh, I can't believe I'm having to be here and vacuum the floor after doing all the... <laughs> And about halfway through, it was like God kind of just slapped me on the back of the head for a second and went, hey, just hang on a second, Nathan, watch your attitude here. This is an opportunity for you to serve the people of this community. And you may think that you've been doing it all the way the last week or two, but this is also another opportunity for you to do that. And I was like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> and I continued vacuuming with a lot better attitude at that point. And I remember sharing that story uh, with our church at the time and, uh, and telling them about it. And they uh, unfortunately got the idea that it meant I didn't like vacuuming anymore. <laughs> Missed the whole point of the story, but that's okay. Because I really do like vacuuming. And as I said before, I, I enjoy the opportunity to, to vacuum this auditorium after you guys have all gone off to go and have your lunch or do whatever else it is you do on a Sunday. Because one of the reasons I do that is because you being able to come into a tidy auditorium the next week feels like love to me. It feels like a way that I can care for you and serve you. And you would never know unless I hadn't just told you. So we'll just keep that between ourselves, okay? So when we consider each of these gifts that we've looked at today, we see it as a part of God's design, an expression of his love. His gifts are not given in a vacuum of relationship, as we identified at the beginning of this message. Which brings us back to the title of this series, Created for King and Community. Because while our gifts are given by God for his glory, we also begin to see that they are designed to be demonstrated in community. 
1 Corinthians 1, 4 to 7 in the New Living Translation. I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you. Now that you belong to Christ Jesus, through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all your knowledge. This confirms what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. The outflow of grace in our lives is demonstrated in community. And in the same way, we are called to be God's people in our everyday lives. We are called to be his people in community. I love the last part of that verse. It says there, you have every spiritual gift that you need in order to be ready to wait for the return of Jesus. I don't think he's talking to one person, you know. He's not just saying, hey, uh, you know, Pastor Sarah, you can do everything. And so you are fully equipped for the return of Jesus all on your own. It doesn't work like that. He's saying as a community, as a group of believers, you are equipped. You have people in the midst of your community who have every spiritual gift that you need to be the community that I called you to be until my return. These verses tell us that God enriched the church with eloquent words, with knowledge and spiritual gifts, all of them given for the benefit and growth of this community of believers, to help them to be effective in serving others in their city. They were equipped. They had the resources they need to serve the people that came into the community, to meet the needs of people within their assembly. And this, I believe, is God's plan for community. It's important that you understand this morning, this is not a, a, a serve or else kind of message. It's not a use it or lose it call regarding spiritual gifts, but instead it is a call to real community. It's a call to knowing the real joy that comes from living out the gifts that God has given us. I'm reminded of the quote from Eric Little, uh, who many of us are old enough to remember. Many of us aren't. Uh, but his life is detailed in the movie Chariots of Fire. And he made this statement. He said, God called me to China to preach the gospel. But he has also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. I love the vision that we have at Kerry. Flourishing communities of hope. But we need to be reminded that communities are relational. See, community grows when we love each other. And when those uh, we come into contact with, uh, when we love them as well, whether it's through ministries like Timber or whatever else it is we do, it grows when we are willing to use our gifts for the benefit of others, for the benefit of community. It's no surprise to me that that text we read at the beginning in 1 Corinthians 12, where it lists off all these spiritual gifts, is directly followed by 1 Corinthians 13. When it talks about love being the greatest of all. When it reminds us that all of these things that we've been given, they are great things that God has gifted us with. But when we take them out of the context of community, when we take them out of the context of love, we have missed the point. Uh, verse 2 in 1 Corinthians 13 says, If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. I've missed the point. The gifts we have been given are given for community, to be an expression of love, love for God, love for our neighbor. Listen how the message translation of 1 Peter 4 sums this up for us. Uh, verse 8 to 10. Most of all, love each other as if your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. Be quick to give a meal to the hungry, a bed to the homeless, cheerfully. Be generous with the different things God gave you, passing them around so all get in on it. If words, let it be God's words. If help, let it be God's hearty help. It is this heart and this love for others that is the key to spiritual gifts, not the gift itself. God's made sure that as a community we have all the spiritual gifts we need. What he calls us to understand is that they were always designed to be used to create and to sustain community. 
I can be the greatest preacher in the world, but if the message doesn't point people to the love found in Jesus, I've missed the point. If the message that I bring doesn't point people to community, to linking together in relationship with one another, in serving one another, then the message has missed the point. The verses we read earlier in Romans 12 about spiritual gifts are directly followed by a call to sincere love in action. So today, I want to close with a quick story. A story that might seem a bit strange for a sermon about gifts. But I want you to bear with me for a minute. I'm going to put the slide up when you're ready, thanks. This is from an article It said, with just days to live and too sick to speak, a six-year-old girl hid notes and drawings all over her house, telling her parents and her sister again and again, I love you. While Elena Deserick was writing the notes, her parents were keeping a diary so her younger sister Gracie would one day understand what happened after Elena was diagnosed with brain cancer. They transformed that diary into a book entitled Notes Left Behind, which was released uh, in the United States. Elena's parents found the first notes in a backpack. Others were hidden between books on the bookshelf, in the corner of dresser drawers, between dishes in the china cabinet, or between photos stacked away in boxes. We started to collect them, they said, and they would all say, I love you, Mum, Dad, and Grace. We kept finding them, and still to this day, we keep finding them. Keith Deserek. Uh, told a television reporter in their hometown of uh, Cincinnati, literally there are hundreds of notes that we found. Deserick and his wife, Brooke, each hold onto a sealed note they've never opened. We always want to know that there's one more note that we haven't read yet, he said. When I read that article, my heart was wrenched. Here is a six-year-old girl, year one age, And she has a revelation of life that so many people in the world, including myself, continually struggle with. She's six years old and she realizes, I'm not going to live to C7. And so what does she do with the last months of her life? She seeks to make an investment in her family, in community. She writes literally hundreds of notes. And you can see some of them. There's a website. I think it's called Notes Left Behind. And you can go on and actually see images of some of the notes that she left. And, and they're a six-year-old's note. Lots of heart symbols and pictures and, and writing that with letters backwards and all that kind of stuff. She realized that this life is not about me. And so she spends her final days not seeking something for herself, but leaving an ongoing investment in the lives of her family and others. I want you to think for a moment about this little girl, Elena, at six years old. Days to live, by now unable to speak. And she makes decisions that would influence this and future generations with the power of love. What did she get out of all of that work to write these hundreds of notes? She even hid them so they wouldn't be found until after she was gone. And yet these notes have ministered hope, love and joy into the hearts of her parents, impacting the life of her younger sister along with the diary that her parents kept and now impacting the world through her story being told. All because a little girl who had every right to cling to her last moments in life, to enjoy and experience everything she could, spend her last days wanting to leave a legacy of love that would far outlast her short life. And I remember as I read this, feeling like God challenged me and said, what would it look like if I could live out that kind of heart, that kind of love, that kind of understanding of of what it means to invest in the lives of people around us and to live out my whole life in a way that invested in king and community. 
What would it look like if as a church that we got captured by a revelation of love and a revelation of who God is to such a point that we were willing to say, I'm going to invest the things that God has placed in me to impact the lives of others around me. I'm going to find ways to be able to come alongside. I'm going to find ways to serve, to encourage, to give, to preach, to teach, to prophesy, whatever it is that God has gifted me with. I'm going to find a way to use that to be able to glorify God and be a revelation of love to the community in which I serve. I wonder what our churches would look like if we truly had that kind of revelation of what love is. I wonder what my life would look like if I could truly live that out in the day to day. So as it close this morning, we have been given the opportunity here to truly be a flourishing community of hope. As we serve one another, as we serve the city in which we live, but we can only truly be a community when we are willing to invest in those around us with the gifts that we have been given. That is what spiritual gifts are for. That is why God has invested them within us. So in a moment, we're going to stand and sing. And then we're going to come back and share communion together. But as we sing this next song, my prayer for us this morning is that we would be reminded afresh of the wonderful love that God has invested in each one of us and how he has called us to community. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for who you are. We are grateful for your presence we're grateful for the way that you have invested in us the gifts of forgiveness and eternal life, given us your Holy Spirit, and that you have given us gifts for King and community. We are grateful to be called your children. And we ask now, Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts. Speak to us. Challenge us. Help us to hear your voice in the midst of everything else that has been said that would speak with words of encouragement and love and grace to stir us for the good works that you have already prepared for us to do. Lord Jesus, we honor you today and we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing.